Parshas, Ki Savoy, Tavshin Pe Gimel. Not too many more weeks of saying Tavshin Pe Gimel, as we are about two weeks before Rosh Hashanah now. And Baruch Hashem, due to a Simcha tonight, and also due to the grand uh, Bikuchoylem parlor meeting taking place in one of the neighborhoods of Lakewood tonight. So we're pre-recording the shear, and uh, Mir Tashem, we will post it up so everybody could have it by tonight. And Chazal tell us in our parsha so many different ways and aspects that the mitzvah of Bikurim is a very, very special and very, very great mitzvah. And we have discussed in the past, we have discussed the Sifri, the Sifri that says that mitzvah's Bikurim was the mitzvah which in that schus, Klal Yisrael, was Zoycha to go into Eretz Yisrael. And we discussed, we had a whole discussion about that in one of our shiurim in previous years, why it was dafka, that mitzvah, that was a schus that they should be able to go into Eretz Yisrael. The Medrash actually says on this that the Pasuk says, Bereshis baro elekim. Everybody knows, right? Beginning of the Torah, something we're going to lay in Amir Tashem in a few weeks, right after Sukkot. Bereshis baro elekim. And the Medrash says that Reshis, one of the things that the word Bereshis, the word Reshis, what it alludes to is the mitzvah of. Bikurim. As we know, the Pasuk says, Reishis Bikurei Ad Masacha. So that mitzvah of Bikurim, and that, because of that great mitzvah, Reishis Baralikim, that the world was created. Amazing. The world was created because of the mitzvah of Bikurim. By Havas Bikurim, if you look a little bit into what Bikurim, how it was brought and what was done, there's a very interesting thing that we do. Right? We had a long laning on uh, Monday and Thursday this week, right? Uh, tells us all about the things that we would read and we would say when bringing the Bikurim. And we know, if you realize, you look in the parsha, we talk about our entire, for some reason, when it comes to Bikurim, we talk about our entire history, and we don't just read about the things that are relevant to this mitzvah. I mean, of course, there are other things that are relevant to the mitzvah, of why we do the mitzvah, and what is being done, and, and how the mitzvah is able to be done. But in all of that, what we read by Bikurim, things that we say, we discuss the, our entire history leading up to how we as Klal Yisrael became the Am Hanivchar, and it's very unlike any of the other mitzvahs, Hatzluyos, Baaretz, let's say Meiser, right? We, we don't go off on a tangent and start speaking about how we became the Klal Yisrael, how we became the Am Hanivchar, and that's something that we do by the mitzvah Bikurim. So obviously we need to try and understand the reason for all of this. And the truth of the matter is, if we know that Chazal say that a lot of the reason we do Bikurim is to bring out HaKoros HaToy for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for what He gives us. That was the that was the pnimius of the mitzvah of Bikurim. It's a mitzvah of HaKoros HaToy to be Makar Toy for what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us. So why is it, Dafka, that we choose to do this at the mitzvah of Bikurim, that we do all these things, we read our history, and saying where we're up to, and what we're, where we're going, and what we're doing, and it, it, this is all revolves around, obviously, a very, very sp special mitzvah. We do not do it, as we mentioned, by any of the mitzvahs, Hatzluyim Ba'aretz. And uh, if you want to continue on this theme a little bit, uh, we know, you look at the mitzvah of Bikurim, that there are things that are done in the mitzvah of Bikurim which are not done by any other mitzvahs. There's a, there's a whole long list of things. You know, when you bring Bikurim, the Torah tells us about Hishtachavah, that we bow down. 
Where do you find out that? Where do you find another place, another mitzvah that while we're doing the mitzvah, we bow down to Hakadosh Baruch Hu? And uh, so too, um, to, to add on to that, mitzvah bikurim has to be done besimcha, and uh, and it was brought by we know it was brought with the simcha. Why also brought by many people together? Beroivam hadras melech a mitzvah is obviously greater. And it's more of a Kiddush Hashem. When we do a mitzvah with a lot of people, Baravam, Hadras Melech, and by Bikurim, that was a very prominent part of it, that a lot of people did the mitzvah together, also unique to this mitzvah, and not to Trumois and Maestra, so to say, by other, um, and by other mitzvahs that we mentioned that are done in Eretz Yisrael. It, this is all very, very unique to the mitzvah of Bikurim. Everybody in Yerushalayim, what a sight it was. People in Yushalayim would come out, they would come greet those people who are coming to Yushalayim to do the mitzvah of Bikurim. And obviously, the list goes on longer, but let's stop that list over here right now, just for uh, time's sake. We don't have, we only have a certain uh, small, a lot of time, uh, the attention span time, we call it, right? So, obviously, we see from all of this that the mitzvah of Bikurim is quite special and quite unique. So, in the Siva Shalom, in explaining all of this, he brings from a Sefer, Sefer Ma'or Vashemesh, who brings from the Heliger Rebbe Limelech Melezens, Zuchusi Yogan Aleinu, a very, very special thought about the Chashivas of this mitzvah. And he says like this, he says, let's understand what the mitzvah Bikurim really is. You have a person, a person who has a farm, and he works extremely, extremely hard the entire year. What's he doing? He works on planting, cultivating, plowing his field, right? Pruning, trimming, whatever it is that he does throughout the whole year. It's a lot, a lot of hard work. His land, his crops, he puts a lot into it. And imagine the Simcha person comes to his field and he sees that after all of that work, after all of everything that he put in, he sees the first fruits. Obviously, that's a great, great joy. You know, um, myself and most of the people I would say watching this year probably don't have farms and don't have fields. I know some of the people in Eretz Yisrael do, or some people even here in the United States have. But most people today, we may not understand or understand the concept of the joy of after working a field. You know, you know our ancestors and our great-grandparents, so many of them worked the land. And it was a great joy. Imagine that great joy. Someone comes out and he sees the first fruits, which means that what you did the whole year, you put so much work in, it all worked. And what would be your, the initial reflex upon seeing that first fruit and the joy would for sure be to take that fruit, to grab it and put it right in your mouth and take a big juicy bite out of that fruit. That would have to be the, um, the, the reflex of every person <clears throat> that that kind of joy would be expressed by taking and taking a delicious bite out of that fruit. But what do we do? What does a yid do? At that moment where everything and all your work is bearing fruit, literally, it's all coming together, all your efforts, everything you did the entire year. What do you do? What does the Torah want you to do? What does the year do? You stop. You stop at that moment and you tie a string on that fruit and you dedicate this event, you dedicate this time, you dedicate this fruit for Hashem, for the mitzvah of Bikurim. That is the mitzvah of Bikurim. When you stop, when the instinct is to get such joy and eat it all up yourself, we stop and we uh, dedicate this to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that, that moment, that is something which is extremely valuable to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To give to Hashem what is most valuable and most precious to you. And the Torah, when we speak about Rashis Bikureyad Masacha, we see that the Torah mentions a few other mitzvahs with the word Rashis. We know this Pidyon Aben, this Rashis Deganacha, 
Rashis Hagez, right, is Rashis takes a very prominent, prominent role in the, in the Hashivas of certain mitzvahs in the Torah. And it's all going, revolving around the same theme of giving Hashem your first, giving Hashem your best. But Rashis Bikure Ad just based on the amount of chash of the things that you need to do and the things that revolve that mitzvah that we mentioned before, that is, out of all the rashes, that it would seem from the Torah is the most chash of, that after a full year of work, we stop and we dedicate that moment, that time, that fruit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And yes, in the schus of this idea, in the schus of this mitzvah, the world was created, as we've mentioned many times, that Hashem has a great place up in Shamayim, with Malachim, with Tzrafim, with so many things up there, yet Hashem wants a dira b'tachtoinim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants a dwelling place. We are on this world, a world full of Tivus, a world full of Gashmias. Yes, this is where Hashem wants to be, because Hashem wants that we should stop and take what we have in this world, which is all based on Gashmias. Gashmi is fruit, Gashmi is food, Gashmi is working the land. It's all based on Gashmi is, and Hashem says, Hashem wants to have his place, uh, the, the, his, the Mishkan, the Beis HaMikdash, everything was put on this world because Hashem wants us to elevate our life and the things that we do and dedicate them to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, where we could stop and dedicate our accomplishments to Hashem. And that is, now we can understand, that's Taka, the Tachlis Abriya. Horatius, the world was created for that. So we can make a Kiddush Hashem. We say, One of the things, the Svarim say, which is Dvarim, which is something which is Yakar, the Chaviv Me'oid. That which was, which is extremely valuable and loved by yourself, go ahead, you'd love Hashem with that. Stop and say, no, this is not for me, this is for you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that is the reason for all the fanfare of Bikurim, because it's the tachas of the world. It's what Hashem wants, for, wants from us. And we talk and come, comes the Chodesh of Elul, that we're a couple of weeks now before Rosh Hashanah, it's a good lesson to bear in mind, a good lesson to keep in mind that although we have joys in life and we have, um, we have Gashmias things in life and we have things that we attain and things that we do and things that we accomplish, but the idea is, first of all, the Hakara Satoiv aspect, to understand that nothing can be done on our own, nothing is done on our own. Everything is done with the chesed of Hashem. Everything is done only because Hashem wants it and Hashem wills it and Hashem wants, helps us accomplish all of that. But the other lesson besides, aside from the important lesson of Akara Satoiv, is the lesson of Hashem, you gave me this talent. You gave me this thing. You gave me whatever it may be in Gashmi. It's whatever you have attained. Hashem, you gave it to me. I'm dedicating it to you. I'm going to use it for Avodah Hashem. I'm going to use it to thank Hashem. I'm going to use it for good reasons. And I'm going to say, Hashem, my biggest things that I want in my life, I'm dedicating it to you. And this should talk be a lesson, a lesson of this week, a lesson, Parshas Bikurim, a lesson of Parshas Kisavoy. We should talk be Zoyche to be able to thank Hashem for so many good things, and like the Torah tells us, to serve Hashem besimcha, to serve Hashem besimcha, which was a requirement also in these mitzvahs that we do in mitzvahs bikurim, we should be, have a wonderful Shabbos. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to our early share.